Hello and welcome to Tylogs Q&A. To tell our viewers in Tylogs Q&A, we invite questions from our members and get an expert in the house to answer them for you. The expert in the house today is Kanika Mathur, and we are focusing on how to brand and market your product or service. Welcome, Kanika. Thank you for joining Hi. us today. And nice we will dive you. straight into the... Thank you. And we'll dive straight into the questions. How to brand my product so that the customer gets to know about my product and also ends up using it and realizes how we are making the life simple for them. So I think the way I would I would start this whole topic uh, about branding is really you need to make sure that you're not considered as a me too right mm -hmm. there are tons like when i go to amazon right there are tons of uh, let's take uh, headsets as an example you know uh, when i go there there are tons of products that are there some are for 1200 to 1500 rupees the apple ones are really expensive and then you have you know a wide ranging number of products that you can pick up from 400 500 bucks mm -hmm. as well um, but if you look at people today, you know, they're quite brand conscious. They would love to wear something which they believe is the best quality and has the best performance, right? And I would, I would sort of try and make sure that I develop a positioning by looking at, at these aspects as the basic context, right? Uh, what I would do is uh, I would look at who am I selling to, which is, of course, the most critical part. Um, if you look at brands like Boat as an example, right, um, they have clearly gone on the lifestyle sort of um, approach and they are talking to a very wide mass target audience, right? Mm -hmm. And they've used, you know, cricketers and, and um, you know, film actors as influencers who they showcase wearing the brand. And of, co of course, they've done really well in the market. Now, once you're getting into a situation where, uh, currently you're in a situation where you really cannot differentiate the product, uh, you know, then it's really important for you to think about a niche target audience first. How do you actually make a breakthrough, right? So who are you selling to? Why will they buy you, right? How do you differentiate yourself, right? Uh, what is your value versus competition, right? You, you need to actually say something, right? Whether it's performance, whether it's... Uh, customer service, you need to really talk about this, right? And how are you different and unique? And even if you're going to get a film actor to talk about it, you need to figure out why, right? Why? So that's, I think, uh, an important thing, you know, uh, to look at. And the other thing I'd like to say is, how do you get inspired, right? Like the way I would get inspired is to look at someone like Apple, right? But look at what Apple has done. They've built a huge ecosystem, right? And they made the lives of people very simple by building an ecosystem. So once you're inside the ecosystem, you don't want to leave it. That's yeah. a great way of catching the customer, right? So whether it's laptops, whether it's accessories, whether it's phone, it's all there. And the way they make life simple is to ensure not just from design, but also to ensure that, you know, you have things like great privacy and you know security and so on and so forth so you really feel comfortable in the ecosystem so you need to think about what is the entire ecosystem that you want to build for yourself and that will help make life simpler okay. right so i think that that would be something that you should look at as a context as well right but the way i would like to look at it immediately you know if you have a product that's going into the market try and see how you can be a little different in the way you approach it right <clears throat> And, uh, you know, even if you're spending money, how can that money be spent differently, right? So lifestyle is a big way, you know, uh, to sell brands like yours, right? So how do you actually showcase your brand would be an interesting thing to do if you're on Amazon, as an example, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, how about thinking about, let's say, an augmented reality or a 3D approach to showcasing your product, you know? So if you go to... to uh, you know, Amazon today, you, you see really a boring way in which people have showcased the product. Maybe you can actually differentiate yourself by showing your products in a different way using 3D. Now, this is just an example, but, uh, you know, you really need to think about the whole, uh, you know, approach that you have right from the customer, the differentiation of your brand and how you want to make your, li your customer's life simple. And how you want to focus, whether it's going to be lifestyle-led, whether it's going to be tech-led, what is it going to be? 
And I think we need to have a deeper conversation to actually arrive at what is the best way of managing this. Okay, great. Uh, the next question is, we want someone to help us rate our brand in terms of product, perception, trust, and give us feedback to improve it further. How does a brand, how does a company do that? I think this is a really important question. You know, all of us tend to get lost in what we do and we never look at the metrics. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, looking at the metrics for a brand is really uh, crucial to know how are you progressing, right? So I think this is a great question. And the way I would look at it is that there are there is no one way of doing this. You need to look at three or four different approaches in today's uh, day and age. So the one, of course, is to do a survey, right? You can go out and actually do a survey with uh, <clears throat> your customers and with your prospective customers to figure out what is the perception of the product or the service that you have, right? So that's one thing that you should do. But a survey is not enough because it's always a sample. You should always look at what are people saying about you online. Uh, you should look at the negative and positive sentiments that you can actually, uh, you know, gauge very easily when you look at things like reviews and ratings and also conversations that are taking place online. So I would always juxtapose my uh, survey with an online social media analysis of what people are really saying about my product and service. And I would take, uh, you know, negative aspects of what they're saying in a very important way and as a feedback to how I can improve myself, right? And of course, then there are other things that I can do. Like, for instance, I can look at my net promoter score. How are people ready to refer me right to other people now that could be done in my loyalty program it could be done at my point of sale it could be done anywhere but i think a net promoter score um, is an aspect that one should always look at you know when one is looking at finding out a comprehensive way to rate the product and lastly i would look at things like market research reports on, competi on competition, market share, and stuff like that. So I would look at all these three, four aspects together and then evaluate where I need my perceptions to change and my value exchange to be better. Okay, great. Uh, that gets us to the last question. Uh, how to create and promote a brand if I'm targeting the rural market? Yeah, I think this is a really um, interesting question because India is such a huge geography and it's really difficult to penetrate it, particularly in the rural areas where there's very poor infrastructure um, and widely dispersed customers. So I would look at three key approaches for going to market. One is, how can I manage my distribution to underserved areas? Second is, how can I identify customers who are important to me, you know, in a highly dispersed geography and market? And the third is, how do I build trust through an ecosystem of stakeholders? I, I would look at these three things as the three most important things that uh, I need to do strategically and then build my advertising and marketing around it. So when it comes to distribution, you know, there are a lot of big players in the market today who are trying really hard to get into, uh, you know, the hinterland. Let's take ITC as an example, or let's take Tata Motors or Unilever as an example. So ITC actually bypasses distributors and goes direct to retailers. And they serve them through, you know, scooties and vans and so on and so forth. Tata Motors have gone to the, really to the edge of actually identifying people who could become their advocates. And, you know, they are called Gram Mitras who actually collect information from people who may be interested in buying Tata Motor products. And Hindustan Unilever has rolled out the Shakti program, which is really very, very well known where they've created entrepreneurs out of women you know, they've created livelihood as well as a distribution, right? So these are three really interesting examples of how people have tackled 
the rural market and have succeeded, right? So you also need to think about how you're going to actually bypass major distributors who don't really have a focus beyond, let's say, the top 50,000 uh, towns and go beyond into the real rural hinterland. Wow. And the second thing I would look at is who is my customer and how am I going to buy, uh, how, how are they going to buy from me, right? So if I'm going to uh, look at identification of the customers, I really need to focus on identification and methods of identification, right? Uh, even if I define, it's not really going to help unless I'm able to identify, right? So people like Dabur, for instance, have used GIS to actually actually identify pockets of, um, you know, places. Like, for instance, they would look at concentration of banks, branches, and they would look at, you know, the 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 output, economic output of an area and then go try and build a a go-to-market plan, right, for instance. So clusters, identifying clusters would be an important area. Like, let's take Maruti as an example. What they've done is that they've actually identified pockets. Like, for instance, they've identified turmeric farmers in Tamil Nadu. They've identified apple growers in Himachal Pradesh. And they've actually gone and uh, gone to market over there. So it's a very interesting, uh, you know, focused uh, approach where you really need to find a needle in a haystack. Right. And the last thing is building trust. Now, this is really crucial, right? Because the rural areas are moving out from commodities into brands. So how does a brand build trust is, is really important. And there, I think building personal bonds with consumers is critical. And so you have, you know, uh, you know, a medical company called Novartis, which is actually you know, created a forum where they go out into the market, have health camps, and they actually go and help people, uh, you know, understand what are the issues related to health, whether it's family health, women health, child health, and they have camps, they go and advise people. So that actually has helped build a lot of confidence for this company, which leads to them, you know, picking up their products when, when the time is right right so this is this is the kind of stuff that one needs to do to actually help build a brand in rural markets thank you so much kanika thanks a lot for answering the questions for our members thank you for your time it was a pleasure i hope that uh, you know we can catch up for deeper discussions sure sure thank you so much kanika thank you.